Before I get to my main point, let me say something. I had to go to this gas station maybe two or three hours ago and I pumped some gas and I had to go to the ATM as well. <clears throat> Meanwhile, I was seeing this guy going in and out <clears throat> of this gas station. And I was wondering what that person was doing, but whatever. So I went to the ATM and right when I was walking out, this person was telling me that he did not have anything to eat and he showed me his finger. I don't know what happened to his finger, but his finger was swollen. It was really, really huge. I believe he broke his finger. I don't know. It was really, really big. Crazy. And when he told me that he did not have anything to eat, to be quite honest, I just wanted to give him like a really bad excuse and walk off. <laughs> but I was thinking, well, I might as well help him. So he went in and he got something to eat and I paid for it. And then when we walked out of the store, he was telling me, well, I need to go to Walmart and get some stuff for his finger. And I'm thinking, man, I just gave you <laughs> something to eat and something to drink. Like, you still asking for stuff? <laughs> and I was thinking, man, I really don't want to. Then I asked him, how much do you think it is going to cost. This guy told me for what he needs, I believe he said that he had to go to the hospital after work too, but what he was saying that it would cost 10 25 And I'm like, I really don't want to give you that much money, but I was thinking, well, I am going to reap what I sow. So I gave this guy 1050 plus the cost of his food and stuff. And while I was driving back home, I was thinking like, man, I really gave that guy more money than I usually give a person off the street. And I was feeling some type of way about that. Then it came to my mind, well, it is good that I helped that person because who knows what God has in store for me. Maybe that was a test, a test to see if I was going to give to a person who I knew nothing about and before I gave him the money I was like this is not for any alcohol or cigarettes or anything like that and that guy told me no and I believe that was a test and I pray that I passed that test because I could have used used that money for other things that I have planned but we are here not for ourselves we are here for other people so let me get to my point now let's go to James chapter 4 verse 7 to the left is the King James Version to the right is the expanded Bible 
Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. There are some people who may say, Hey Kevin, I repented of my sins and I am staying away from those things that are causing me to sin. But for some reason, the temptation to do those sins come to me in a very strong way. So what is really going on here? Even if you have repented, even if you are staying away from those sinful things, you are still going to be tempted. Even Jesus Christ have been tempted. Just because you are being tempted does not mean that you have to fall into that sin. I know for myself, I have stopped doing particular sins for years, have no interest in them, but yet the temptation that comes upon me is as strong as if I was doing it just the other night. So what am I trying to say? You have to resist. Just because you have not done something for a week, two weeks, one year, five years, so on and so on, you have to continue to resist. Some people may think that after they give their life to God, that all temptation is going to end. Like, you may have done crack or marijuana for many years. You believe that once you give your life to God, that he is going to take away that that need or that temptation to to do that particular drug you are going to be tempted with it when i hear let me say this let me say this when i hear that if a person tells me that demons don't really tempt them or demons don't give them bad dreams or not really attacking them one thing pops into my mind you must not be serving god because if you are serving god you are going to receive demonic attacks in some way or form because there is no way that you can be living for god and demons say, hey, let me not mess with this person because, hey, they are living for God and let's go to some other people. When I hear people that don't really receive too many demonic attacks or they say that they are not really getting harmed by demons or they really have no issues, that tells me that they are not really living for God. Because if you are living for God, you better believe demons are going to attack you in some type of way. So when you say that you are not, I know that you are not what you are trying to make yourself seem. So I pray that makes sense there. So my main point here, you have to continue to resist. If you don't resist, you are going to continue to fall into sin. Just because you have repented and now that you are doing the will of God 
you can go to church and do everything right, that does not mean that you are not going to get tempted anymore. When you start living for God, and from what I hear from other people who are actually serving God, you are going to be attacked more. So if a person says that they are living for God now and they are not being attacked more, I know something is wrong. Unless you are praying <laughs> 10 hours a day or something like that, you are going to get, no, I believe even if you do that, you are going to be attacked more. So I pray that this makes sense. You have to resist. Everyone has to resist. If you don't resist, you have to resist. God bless.